Hello, this is uh, one part of my um, process of uh, working on my aquaponics and this is going to be how I power the system using these two uh, 90 watt solar panels on a uh, trackable roof mount and this is how I um, put the system together. I used, uh, this is just square uh, steel stock you can buy at the hardware store. These are the two uh, 90 watt solar panels. Um, I set up the frame that's going to hold the panels and that's the first thing I put together. Now if you have uh, different size panels you know you can you, you can adjust this uh, these dimensions and these sizes to, to fit that. The uh, the key to this whole system is this base and the base is, is uses threaded rods on each side and it pivots in the middle and what this does is if the pitch of your roof if you have to um, mount this to your roof, which most, pe most people will, um, you need to be able to adjust this thing um, up and down and side to side. And with these uh, adjustable threaded rods you can do that. As I'm showing here, this is the actual going to be the track of the, of the panels. After I test fitted everything, I uh, hung it all up and painted it. And uh, now I'm test fitting it on the roof and I used a, a pretty cool uh, website called suncalc.net and it shows the track of the sun um, for your location and I was able to use that to help uh, line everything up and uh, get it set up. Okay now it's um, I'm working on the actual actuator and I used an old 14-4 uh, uh, drill that I had um, I, just, I took it apart, took the motor out I uh, used a uh, 3 8 threaded rod and uh, installed that um, into the end of the uh, motor. And then I'm using a 2 inch PVC uh, pipe and I heat that up and I get it uh, um, super hot that so I can uh, actually uh, wedge this. You'll see how it fits together. Um, it actually press fits together. and. Uh, once it cools, it locks this thing in, into the tube. So once um, once I got that in there and it's cooled off, and I make sure that I get it lined up perfectly, you can see, I, uh, I cut the end off and it ends up being about 11 inches long. Now for the end caps, I use uh, this right here isn't schedule 40 this is a like a whatever schedule 20 and uh, for the end caps I use a schedule 40 the uh, heavy-duty end caps uh, because they're actually going to be part of the the uh, mounting process so they need to be the uh, thicker end caps um, <clears throat> I used um, these 5 16 uh, by 2 inch eye bolts with 5 16 wedge anchors into half inch EMT and that's how I make my uh, rods for the uh, that allows this thing to uh, go back and forth, the actual um, actuator rods. The wedge anchors fit in there super tight and then uh, once you uh, once you tighten it up it is not coming out of there. Now this is how I uh, mark the the center of the uh, two inch end caps, the, the PVC end caps and what I did was I balanced, I made sure that the uh, wood was on a level surface and then I leveled the cap perfectly on top of these uh, this thread screw and then I just pushed it down and that gives me a mark dead center and so I did that on both of the end caps one of the end caps um, I drill at the 5 16 and the other end cap I drill at 3 8 one is going to fit on the uh, on the bottom part and I'll use one of the uh, eye bolts. This eye bolt here is the uh, 5 16 Then on the other side that actually gets attached to the uh, to the threaded rod that goes down into the uh, drill. Some of this stuff is 
is out of order. I, um, you know, when you're doing the uh, R and D stuff, you're taking things apart, putting it back together, trying things out. And uh, I'm filming the whole time, and sometimes I film some things, and sometimes I don't film film uh, other things. So I try to put this in the order of things uh, that you need to do. So sometimes you may see something out of sync, like you may see a bolt that has the the washers welded on, and other times you you won't see them. But uh, try to put it in uh, some kind of order for you. Okay, right now this is the uh, three eighths. And this is the part that's going to go on top of the uh, on top of the um, motor. Now, before I do that, I take some epoxy and I epoxy the um, threaded rod into the end of the uh, drill. And I do that because you know I, I made sure it was really tight, <clears throat> but uh, this is going to be um, closed up and it would be really hard to get to later if it came loose. So by adding this epoxy, um, sort of ensure that uh, that this won't come apart later, or come uh, come out. So I um, I fill this end piece up with epoxy, and uh, let that uh, lock together. Then I use a lock nut, and I run that down almost to the end. Here you'll see it's about an inch up. And what this is going to do is the cap is going to come down and you want the cap to cover about an inch of the PVC. Now if your caps are really tight you may need to sand that. Uh, this one was loose on top of this pipe and it actually is going to spin over the pipe. So now what I do is I silicone this and then I'm going to put a washer and a nut on the top also and then I'm going to lock this piece down and what happens is when this drill is turning that cap is turning also but it's going to allow for a, a watertight um, seal as far as rain water you know obviously you can't put it under water but uh, in the position it's it, it's in on the uh, on the stand uh, there's no way for uh, water to get inside to that motor so I lock this down and uh, and it's siliconed also on top and then I'll uh, hook it up to a battery here and I'll show you how it spins make sure you don't glue this thing don't, the top does not get glued to the uh, to the PVC and as you can see you hook it up to a battery and it spins along with the uh, the motor it spins on top all right these are the uh, ends and this is how I made the um, the connectors for um, to, you know to connect the cylinder to the uh, to the to the stand and what I did was I uh, just welded some 3 8 uh, washers on I bolted it on and then welded them in place onto the eye bolts and then um, later I come back and uh, sand that grind it up clean it this is what it looks like after I tack it. And then later I clean it up, and here it is cleaned up. And this is uh, what I do is um, this is how I connect it to the. Um, you'll see later how I connect it to the uh, to the stand. Now, once you do that, you get those welded up first. Then you come back and you uh, you you put the eye bolt into the bottom. Now this is what I was telling you about things being out of sync. This one, you know, I did it this way and I ended up having to take it back apart. But uh, this is the other cap, the 5 16th hole. And you bolt this in. And you want this uh, super tight. And after you get this tightened up and put in, you're going to uh, drill a hole for your uh, electrical cable. Mine ended up being uh, 5 16 also. And uh, so I drilled a hole next to this. And that's, uh, this is how I put the uh, electrical cable in. 
I run the cable through and on the other side I, uh, I tie a knot into it so it uh, can't be accidentally pulled out or pulled on the connections because this cap is going to be glued um, in place. So once this cap's on there you don't want to have to get in there and mess around with anything. Also what I do to, uh, to make sure the connections are good is I solder them. So now these wires um, get soldered to the motor wires. And it doesn't matter which uh, wires go to which because later you're going to be uh, reversing them to make the, the actuator go up and down. So I solder these and then, uh, and then I also put some wire nuts on them. and then uh, put it in the end and glue this cap on. This cap gets uh, glued on with PVC glue and there it is, it's set up now. Now later I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some uh, actual dimensions of the, uh, of the rod and the, um, the end pieces again this is you know research and development right so I I ended up cutting this thing like five different times to get the right length uh, to make it work but uh, this is where I started so this was like the longest longest point that I started at and I uh, primed and painted it and then now on the uh, on the actual rack I installed another uh, of the eye bolts and this is how I connect them together, connect the, uh, the actual rack to the cylinder. There's the one on the bottom, and then here's the one on the top. This is a stop I use. Um, the way it works with the, uh, the way the cylinder goes up and down, it, uh, it needs a stop on one side. And then also, these panels are real heavy, um, so I use these heavy springs and this helps uh, neutral out the panels. Also, uh, it helps with any kind of uh, wind. It helps buffer that and uh, keeps them from rattling around. And then I used uh, some fender washers, uh, screwed into the steel and then screwed into the side of the panels. And that's how I mounted the uh, panels to the uh, rack. Okay, this is how I fine tune the adjustment of the uh, panels in uh, relationship to the sun. Take a pencil, mount it to a board, and as you can see how the, uh, the shadow shows off the uh, pencil, as long as there's no shadow, then the panels are perfectly lined up. And uh, I set it on top of the panels, and I align it up with the sun using these adjustments, and uh, that's how it works. Okay, now I'm just uh, taking it through the uh, range of motion from the starting position all the way to the finished position. In a future video, I'm going to show you how I wire the panels and the motor um, all to the controls and how I get the uh, panels to track uh, with the sun. But uh, I'll make a separate video on that. Well, that's all for now, and uh, I hope in the uh, near future I'll have the other video uh, up and running showing you the, uh, the way I get it to, to track. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, take care.